<clears throat> Hello, everyone, again. Um, let's continue to talk about the Halliday and Resnick textbook, 10th edition. Let's go to the Halliday and Resnick test textbook, uh, chapter 27 regarding circuits, problem number 44. Let's talk about that. It should go relatively quickly. Uh, here is a drawing of the figure that they have for problem number 44, and they ask us some questions regarding this particular problem. Let's take a look at it and see what we can say about it. In figure 27-53, and that's roughly what I've drawn right here, um, R sub 1 is 100 ohms, R sub 2 equals R sub 3, and they're both equal to 50 ohms. Each one is equal to 50 ohms. R sub 4 is 75 ohms, and the, uh, the ideal battery has EMF 6 volts. Um, a, B, C, D, E, what are they asking? A, what is the equivalent resistance, period. Uh, for A, they're asking, what is the equivalent resistance? What is I in B, resistance 1, uh, in C, resistance 2, in D, resistance 3, and in E, resistance 4? They are basically asking, guys, what is the equivalent resistance in this entire circuit? And then they're asking, what is the current that is flowing in each one of the resistors that are there? That's essentially the question that's being asked you guys. So, let's see here. Yeah, right. One, one, two, three, four. In all four resistors, they're at, in each one of the four resistors, they're asking how much current is flowing in each one of those four resistors and what is the equivalent resistance. Simple as that. Um, the drawing itself is potentially intimidating when we look at it. Um, what's going on here? What's, what's being said here? Well, you know, we're going to say, essentially, for our purposes, the current's going to flow. Uh, they're saying the EMF, uh, the EMF is, is this way. So initially, there's going to be a current flow going that way. Uh, and it's going to, you know, it's, it's, it's going to go through this guy initially, and then it's going to break up through this guy, through that guy, and through that guy. They made it diagonal to throw you off. If you're careful about it, the way the current is flowing, uh, and there's a lot of, I'm kind of arguing with myself here, where to go, where not to go with this thing. Um, the current flowing through here, all the way through here, is going to be the entire current, you guys. We'll call this guy I sub 1. It'll flow right through this guy. So when it goes through here, As it's going through here, that, this I sub 1 is the same I sub 1 right here, going through here. Then the I sub 1 breaks up and goes here, here, and, well, let's, let's see here. I mean, it's, it's kind of important how this all works out. It, there, there, it, the, the I sub 1, the I sub 1 breaks up and goes here. This is I sub 2. Uh, then there's a current going here, we'll call it I sub 4, and then there's a current going here, we'll call it I sub 3. They're all breaking up, and they're breaking up in such a way as that they're all, well, I mean, there's a break up here, this is kind of the main one, and from this main current, uh, this is like the total current, and then the total current breaks up here, here, and there. Again, this diagonal thing is a bit of a problem. No, it isn't. I just said this is the main current, I sub 1. The main current, I sub 1, is all of the current. That is, is the total amount of current flowing through this circuit. It's I sub 1. I sub 1 breaks up into I sub 2, into I sub 4, and into I sub 3. It's that simple. In fact, it is identical to saying, uh, to saying this.
this guy breaks up this way, and we got, I mean, I don't, don't know a good way to say it, guys. I mean, this is, this is I sub 2 associated with what's going on here. Uh, There'd be more of a break up here. I mean, where you're going to get this is I sub four. Go on this side, and that's I sub three. So what you got is The big one of all of them is here's the I sub 1, and it's going to break. It's going to break here. Then there's going to be something left over. It's going to come over this way, and then you're going to get, so you're going to get current this way, and you're going to get current this way. Uh, this guy and this guy at the, end of, at the end of the story. I'm trying to kill a couple birds with one stone here, you guys. The big thing here is, we're trying to kill a number of birds with one stone, I guess you could say, when we're doing this whole thing. The big thing that you want to kind of watch out for is that diagonal, uh, that diagonal part of the circuit, it behaves exactly the same as if you just put it this way, parallel to the other two circuits over here. We kind of have it in the back of our minds that I sub 1 is the total amount of current that is going through this thing. And it breaks up. So we got this right here, guys. Let me just get rid of this. So we got some room here. So I sub 1 equals, and I, from that coming in there, it's just I sub 1 is the sum of, uh, forgive me for uh, the way it's written here, it's not, hopefully this, this makes a lot more sense. Uh, I sub 1 is I sub 2 plus I sub 3 plus I sub 4. Yeah, okay. I just wrote it in order. Usually, I mean, the way they, they've mentioned different things, but I'll just write it in numeric order, you guys. I sub 1 is everything. The thing coming up here, uh, I'm a little just apprehensive writing this in, too many colors, I'm putting too many trees in front of you guys, I think, but I mean, I sub 1 is that, I sub 1 is this. It's, it's the same I sub 1 uh, under consideration here, guys. Here's I sub 1. Okay. Um, and it's coming right across here, so let's see what we got here. We got this right here, and that's I sub 1. And that's what we got. So, Pretty important stuff. Now let's let's talk about this. We got this kind of in the back of our mind. I guess I'm, I'm in some sense you're putting the carriage in front of the horse when you, when you say this. At some point you got to say this. I mean the way this stuff is going to run through here, how does it work? Well I'll tell you what, uh, there's got to be a grand total resistance associated with the whole process here. Well this resistor by itself this R1 is going to be in series. This resistor R1 is going to be in series with the result, the equivalent result of these three resistors that are in parallel. Let me find the equivalent resistance of these three resistors that are in parallel with one another. And that equivalent resistance will be in series with R1, and that will give me the grand total resistance. The R total... The resistance total is going to be R1, which is in series with the equivalent resistance of the three of those things uh, being considered there. So what's going on here? Well, yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. RE is the equivalent resistance of those three. Well, yeah, but if they're in parallel, we know that the mathematics pertaining to what's in parallel is the following. 
1 over the equivalent resistance of those three resistors, resistors 2, 4, and 3. Let me just see here. Right. Resistors 2, 4, and 3 uh, is 1 over this guy. 1 over, let me just put them in some kind of numeric order. It doesn't really matter, guys, as long as they're all there. That's what you're looking at. Well, let's, let's add these together by getting the common denominator. Let's make all the denominators of these three denominators, let's make all the denominators the product of R2, R3, and R4, and then figure out what we're talking about. So we got 1 over RE uh, equals uh, R2 plus R3, R4. Uh, I'm sorry, R2 times R3, R4. Well, you multiply by R3, R4 and, uh, on the bottom, multiply by R3, on, R3, R4 on top. Here you're multiplied by R2, R4, and that's R2, R4. And here you multiplied by R2, uh, R3, R4, right? So you, you're going to multiply by R2, R3. Pretty fascinating stuff in that regard. So we're looking at it like this and say, okay, what, what is that actually? What that is, is 1 over, 1 over RE is equal to, we worked hard for the common denominator, leave it alone. Add the other ones. R3, R4, R2, forgive me, R3, R3, R4, R2, R4, and R2, R3. Pretty fascinating in that regard. Those are the, so you see here, R2, R3, R4. Uh, if those look like all the possible combinations of R2, R3, R4, I think you're right. Uh, there are three items there. Uh, there are six different permutations. But as far as uh, six different permutations of pairs for these uh, three. So you got R2, R3, R4. How many pairs can you get out of there where order does matter? Well, when order matters... You could get, you could pick any one of R2, R3, R4, any one of those three, and then match up the other two um, to actually do it. Uh, so, and then any, and then either one of those. So it comes out six. Now, what happens is they there's a, there's repetition. Uh, they occur twice. So six divided by two is three. These are the combinations. The permutations would be six of these. Six items looking like what's on top. It'd be six of those items, but each one of those items would have its, its repetition. So as far as unique, uh, it, it'd have its repetition. Re if, if order did not matter, then there, you couldn't count half of what's up there because there's repetition. So these would be the combinations that you have here, and you get all this. Well, okay. Um, not, not really necessary for what we're saying, but what the heck. I mean, maybe it's something we can... Uh, there, there's, there's some fascinating things that happen in mathematics, and they, uh, they find themselves present uh, in some of the oddest places. So you're looking at this. You get all to hear, you guys. True. Uh, so we got, basically guys, we got to here, which is pretty important. If that's true, if these two items are equal, then their reciprocals are equal. The reciprocal of 1 over RE is RE. Look, let's say it again. Uh, if this 
is equal to that, if these two, if these two quantities are equal, their reciprocals are equal, assuming we're not going to get division by zero, and we're not. So we got this. We got R3, R4. We've got the following combination. We got all three, all three unique combinations from the six items, R2, R3, R4, which is what I was trying to say earlier, though not in the most fluent manner, I guess. Um, So we got this. True. I mean, if two quantities are equal, their reciprocals are equal. You get to this. Plug in all the values that they've given us. Uh, they have told us that R2, they've told us that R2 is equal to R3, and that's 50 ohms. Each one is equal to 50 ohms. And R4 is 75 ohms. Um, 50 times 50 times 75, get an answer. Divided by, um, as we said, 50 times 50 times 75, and get an answer. And after you've gotten the answer of 50 times 50 times 75, you go down here and you say 50 times 75 plus 50 times 75 plus 50 times 50. Add all this on the bottom, get an answer. Multiply 50 times 50 times 75, get an answer. This quantity divided by that quantity. At the end of the day, the equivalent resistance for those three items that are in parallel, um, and then they're telling us, forgive me, let me just kind of go back a little bit. Um, and R1 is, R1 is 100 ohms, but it's not, it's not in the process here. So you're going to get, you should get 18.75 just for this guy. You're not done. That's just, that's the equivalent for those three. Um, 18.75. It's about right. I mean, uh, 50 times 50 uh, is 2,500 times 75, I mean, it's, it's kind of an interesting point how that all plays out. Um, it's three halves of that. I mean, the whole, the, you know, we actually do that. I don't have the cal calculator on me, guys, but, you know, obviously we can do it, and that should not be an issue for us. Um, I'm just trying to look at an easy way we can maybe do some of the math here. Uh, 50 times 50 is 2,500 times 75. 75 is three-fourths of 100. Um, so if you're going to do something like that, uh, you go three-fourths uh, three of 250,000. So three-fourths of 250,000. And then here, what do you got? Um, well, as we said, I mean, you're actually going to play the thing here. You're talking about... 50 times 75, um, which would be, uh, 3,000, um, okay, guys, I'm trying to, get me doing some stuff in my head here, uh, 3,750, 3,750, that's 7,500, 7,500, 7,500 uh, added with 50 times 50 is 2,500. That's 10,000. 10,000 into um, 250,000 times 3 fourths is... 25 times 3 fourths, which is 25 times 3 fourths is 6.25 
times 3. 6.25 times 3 is 18.75. Works out pretty good, guys. All right, whatever. We don't need to do all the gymnastics there, but there it is. We did it. Um, obviously, with a calculator, it's a lot easier. You don't have to play, don't try to play the verification game that I wanted to play without a calculator. They told us that our one was 100 ohms. We just calculated that our equivalent associated with uh, R sub 2, R sub 4, R sub 3 was 18.75 ohms. So that's it. I mean, at the end of the day, you guys, we're going to get the total. When you add those together, the R total is going to be 118.75 ohms. Okay, so I guess the question that they were asking is, let me just ask it here, let me just kind of confirm what they were asking. Uh, for A, what is the equivalent resistance? For A, what is the equivalent resistance? The equivalent resistance, the total resistance uh, in this problem, the total resistance in this problem is 118.75 ohms. Okay, uh, now they're asking, what is the current I in resistance one. Uh, C, uh, for B, what is the current I in B, resistance one, and C, resistance two, D, resistance three, and E, resistance four? Okay, we've been down this road, guys. We, we, we've already said a few things. Now we solve this. I'll tell you what, if we know what the EMF is, why don't we take this equivalent battery and we'll find out what the whole grand total is for the current. Uh, we worked for our total. We got that. You can write it in a lot of ways. Uh, let's see exactly. I want to go here. Okay, um, the way I kind of wrote it was on this one, I said, look, if we, if we get that far, we, we're basically finding all of these at once. I mean, for 44A, we found what we found. We can basically find at this point um, B, C, D, E. And I'll tell you what, I mean, let's just, for B, I1 is the grand total. We said I1's got everything. When they're all, uh, all said and done, as we already said. So let's get the potential difference divided by our total. The way I wrote it was, I think I wrote it as just R, uh, I mean, let's just keep the syntax kind of like identical, if you don't mind. Um, Our total, I think I wrote it as R sub, R sub T. You know, it means the same thing, guys. Uh, v over R sub T. Uh, we've got a battery that's 6 volts. We got 118.75. And at the end of the day, that's the grand total one. It's 0 0.0. 0 0.05053 amps. So, that's it. I mean, uh, so let's, let's go. I mean, that's, that's what B is. I mean, uh, for B, we got I1 is point. I1 is 0 0.05053 
amps okay that's I one so that's going through resistance going through resistor one that's that one now um, a number of ways to go here. I mean, and the way I, I kind of did it, I think I, think I just uh, I more or less cut to the chase pretty quickly. Um, we, wrote, we wrote here, we've got all this stuff, guys. Let me pull a few things off here if I can. You see what I have. You see the answers I gave here. We're going to use, we're gonna use what, we've, what we already know as we need to know it. Um, Okay, well, we know what the numbers are. We can always go back with the film. So erasing a bunch of this stuff is not going to be a bad thing. We'll kind of just summarize everything at the end, I guess, to kind of give us some closure in the process. Um, All right, guys. Uh, some easy ways to look at this, I guess you could say. Um, how do you want to look at this? Well, we got we got the I one under consideration. Let's find out what's going on over here. You know, it's all about ratios, as we said, guys. R two and R three, R two and R three are each of resistance fifty ohms. R4 is of a higher resistance. How much higher? Three halves higher. It's 150% higher resistance. It's not 50 ohms, it's 75 ohms. Um, it's three halves the amount. What does that mean? It means if there's big resistance, less current wants to go through there. If it's smaller resistance, more current tends to want to go through there. And in the end, they all got to go through. Yeah, they all got to go through, but what are we talking about here? And this is another way, this is definitely a good way to do it. I1 is what it is. We found out that I1 was I1. I2 and I3 are the same amount of current because in this parallel situation, in this setup of, you know, of, of, of parallel components in this circuit, in these parallel, in, in this in this sort of parallel circuit, or at least in this part where there's parallel circuits going on, um, R2 and R3 are the same resistance. It's going to be the same amount of current. How much current is that? I uh, I don't know. I, I do know it's the same amount of current, whatever it happens to be. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, if R2 and R3 are the same amount of current, let's call them. Uh, let's let's call it current um, current I goes through R2 and current I goes through R3 and in current 4 because the resistance is 3 halves more resistance than either of the other ones 3 halves more resistance means 3 halves times less current 3 halves times less current would be this divided by three halves. So this is associated with two. This is I2, this is I3, and they're equal. This one has 1.5 times less current going through either of the other ones. Not the two together. I'm not adding the two together. No, that's something else. I do them separately. 
This guy's got current I going through it. This guy I1's got current I going through it. And the uh, resistor, forgive me, not, uh, resistor 2, uh, you know, so let's just say this. Let's say uh, I is equal to I2 is equal to I3. Why is that? Because they're parallel, it's a, it's, a, it's, there's a parallel, uh, there's parallel components here, and because the voltage is the same across both, if the voltage is a, is the same across all these circuits, right here, if if the voltage is the same across all these circuits, uh, because they're parallel circuits, then V divided by something. The voltage is the same now. V divided by something, R2, and V divided by R3, which is the same as R2. V divided by something, and V divided by the same magnitude something is the same amount of current. 50 ohms, 50 ohms is associated with this parallel configuration. 50 ohms is going to have, sur is going to have current I2 equal I3 going through it. It could be current I. 75 ohms has more resistance. How much more resistance? It's got 75 ohms. It's got more resistance than either of those. Take one of them. Just one of them. Not two of them together. Just one of them. This right here is 1.5. Is 3 halves. This has three halves the resistance, has 1.5 times the resistance that either of the other ones has. If it's 1.5 times the resistance, it's going to have a current which is 1.5, which is 1.5 times smaller, which is this, which is two thirds. That's two thirds I. Do the division here, you get two thirds i. That'll work. Absolutely, that'll work. Let's go. This is one i. This is one i. This is two thirds i. Let's solve for i and play the game here, because the other guy, um, two thirds i is equal to I4. Once you got that, you're done. It's the hardest part of the whole problem, you guys. This guy right here is equal to something. Same with this. Well, they're equal to each other, and we'll say it's going to be equal to this. The I4 is going to be smaller, because it's got, it's got 1.5 times the resistance. That means it's going to be 1.5 times it's going to be 1.5 times less current than, the, than either of those. 1.5 times less is I divided by 1.5 times less is I divided by 1.5. I divided by 3 halves is 2 thirds I. And you get to here. So we got this, we got this, and I think we're in business. We're done if we can get it. Uh, let's add them together. One and one and two thirds is two and two thirds. Two and two thirds is eight thirds. Eight thirds I. Here's I, here's I, here's I. One I plus one I plus two thirds I is two and two thirds I, which is eight thirds I. Sounds good to me. Um, this is absolutely not the only way to do this. I mean, as we said, but we, we came out to where we came out, guys. What do we got? You got what you got, man. I mean, for this one right here, let's multiply, let's multiply each side of the equation. There's an equation for you. Let's multiply each side of the equation by 3 eighths. I is equal to 3 eighths I1. Great. 2 thirds of I is going to be I4. Um, 
So what are we going to say here? So we said, I, you know, so basically we said I is this. So I is equal to I2 equals I3. Right? We, that's what we set up here. I was 3 eighths. I1. True. Uh, 2 thirds I is I4. Uh, true. So what's 2 thirds I? Yeah, well, 2 thirds I, well, didn't we say that I was equal to 3 eighths I1? So, if, so 2 thirds I. I is 3 eighths I1, 2 thirds. Let's see what we got here, guys. It's going to be 2 thirds this, of this answer, is what it's going to be. Two thirds of I, that's two thirds of I. What's I? I was three eighths I one. Three eighths I one. The threes cancel, you got two over eight, which is two thirds I is I four. Let's never forget that. We added as I four right here. The threes cancel, you got two over eight times I one. Two over eight is one fourth I one. All right, guys, this is easier done than said. I mean, maybe listening to me is not the easiest way to do this. But if you do have the patience to do so, I, this, these are the right answers. Uh, you got one-fourth I1 right here. Let's see what we got here. We got I4. I4 is one-fourth I1. And I2 and I3... is 3 eighths I1. 3 eighths I1 is 1 eighth more, is 1 eighth I1 more than 1 fourth I1. 1 fourth I1 is 2 eighths I1. 3 eighths I1 is bigger than 1 fourth I1. And it's going to happen twice. What do we got here? How much bigger is it? Well, if you multiply this by 1.5, which is 3 over 2, you get 3 eighths. 3 eighths and 3 eighths is 6 eighths, plus 2 eighths is 8 eighths, is 1, is the whole thing. So it's a bit of a mess, but we, we got it. I mean, we got it. What happens is, guys, you got the end of the song and dance here, I guess you could say. And I do, I think I did it a little slight, not much differently, actually. I did essentially this, but I mean, I don't have the feature where I can actually talk about. The whole thing. Let me. I mean, I said I did essentially this. I, I may have used a little bit different terminology in terms of the variables. I think I used the variables a little differently when I approached it. But that's the essential argument is is the same in all circumstances here, guys. So you're looking at it. You got what you got. Um, what the heck did you get? I mean, what you what you got was essentially I two equals I three equals three-eighths of what I1 is. I4 is one-fourth of what I1 is. Cool. Um, well, okay. I mean, we, we said... We already said what I1 was. Um, we solved that right off the bat, or at least a close, close to off the bat. Um,
Forgive me, guys. I could have sworn I had more chalk here. Okay. Um, so I won. We already did right off the bat, you guys. And it was equal to... Point zero five zero five three amps. That's I one. I two and I three are equal. We've already said that. Um, just take one more out of here, guys. I1 is point, I1 is point zero five zero five three amps. I1 is point zero five zero five three amps. I2 equals I3, which is three eighths of I1, which is three eighths of point zero five zero five three, and that came out to point zero one eight nine five. Point zero point zero one eight nine five amps. Sounds good. Um, and I four is a quart. So three eighths three eighths of this is that, which is equal to that, of course. Uh, so three eighths of this will give you that and give you that. I mean, they're equal to each other. And one fourth of this will give you a, a smaller current than that. And indeed, this is a smaller current right here that I'm about to write down. Point zero one two six three. Yeah, that's indeed smaller than 0 0.01895. Sure, 0 0.01263 and 0 0.01895 amps. Yeah, this is, yeah, there's, if you took, um, if you took one eighth of this, if you took one eighth of that quantity and subtracted it from this one, you'd get that. Anyway, it's all about the proportions, you guys, at the end of the day when you're getting all this stuff. So you're getting, you know, you got, you've got the B, you've got the C, uh, you've got the D. I, I put them together in my notes because they're the same here. And you've got the E right here in regard to this stuff, guys. So you got... see here that's it uh, that's everything that's that's essentially the argument I think when I had when I had when you, when you see the notes you guys scrolling at the end of uh, the discussion uh, scrolling at the end of this film when you see uh, the notes pertaining to some of the solutions uh, that we that that I wanted to look at from chapter 27 uh, in the Halliday and Resnick book you'll see that I essentially did the same thing here I think I used for the uh, for kind of the master variable I think what I was using uh, with that one is I, I based it a little differently. I, I based it on um, I, I based I four to kind of be the 
the main one to look at. I said, well, the I4 is kind of like the variable. Well, if that's the case, if I4 is the variable, uh, if I4 is, if, if I4 is the, the current that I want to find, then the currents I2 and I3 are each going to be uh, three halves more current than this guy is. And you can still set up the algebra and do it. And that, it's set up here in a slightly, in, in, in a different manner than what I just explained. But again, it's the utilization of the ratios. I4, I4 is a particular amount of current. I2, which is equal to I3, so each one of the, this holds for each one of these. Not together, you don't add these together. I mean, you add them together in the end to confirm that when you add I2, I3, and I4, you get I1, you get that. If you add this, this, and that, you're gonna get that. I mean, there's some round offs in here and everything else, but you know what I mean. You're gonna add it and you are gonna get to what you need to get. But if you're using I4 and you're calling I4 the current that I'll deal with, okay, that's fine. That's going through a big resistor. This guy's going through a resistor that has got 1.5 times less resistance than this one is going through. Yeah, if it's 1.5 times less resistance, if the magnitude of the resistance through which I2 and I3 as well, somewhere else, are going through, if they're both, if each of them, is, if each of them are going through, if each of them is going through a resistance that is 1.5 times smaller resistance than what this is, it's a size that is diminished, that it's a size that is 1.5 times smaller, that means uh, its resistance is two-thirds the resistance that this is. What does that mean? Two-thirds the resistance through which this goes through compared to this means three halves more, three, time, three over two times more, three halves times more current will go through here. If I4 is the amount of current going through the 75 ohm resistor, then the amount of current going through a resistor that is 1.5 times smaller means you'll have 1.5 times the size of current than what you had for I4. So if I4 has this amount, if you multiply this amount by 1.5, bingo, you get this. Multiply 12 by 1.5, you get 18. Let me say it like that. There's the 60 something, well yeah, 1.5 times 60 will give you 90 something. So let's just forget the 60s and the 90s and all that stuff. Say, let's call that 12, let's just call it 12. What's 1.5 times 12? It's 18. Yeah. If you add them all together, you're going to get that. Okay? All right, guys. So, again, there's a, I, I did it a little differently in the notes, but it's the same kind of logic utilizing proportions. All right. Thank you all very much. Uh, we'll talk again.